Hey guys, my name is Nine and welcome to my channel. I do videos on old tech, new tech, video games, and tons of other stuff. This is actually my first video for this channel, so if you like this and want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. There's a bunch of cool games from Windows 98. I remember playing a few on an old computer my brother had, and even some on some old computers at the school I used to go to. So naturally, I wanted to relive my nostalgia by booting up the old 98 and seeing if I could run some of these games. Right now you're probably asking me, Hey Nine, why don't you just run the games on new hardware or maybe in a virtual machine? It's a good question. I looked around and I found out that running some of these in a virtual machine is actually impossible. The games run much better on the hardware they were designed for. So without further ado, here's the build. So here I got all my parts, and no, I'm not actually using a 960 or a 750M or that MSI motherboard for this project. I was just using the boxes to hold all of it. I'm using a motherboard and a processor from a compact D530. It's got a pretty great Pentium 4 clocked at about 3 gigahertz. For the power supply, I used the one that was in the case. It's about a 240 watt. I have two sticks of DDR2 RAM totaling to about 256 megabytes. Can't forget the crown piece of the build, an NVIDIA Vanta Riva 128 TNT2 with a whopping 8 megabytes of onboard video memory. Got some various optical drives and a floppy drive. And then the hard drive, a Maxtor Diamond Max 16. It's got 120 gig capacity, just scraping by the max drive limit of 125-ish gigabytes in Windows 98. Last but not least, I think, is the case. Not much to say about this one. First I put the motherboard on top of the box and put the RAM in. If you've never built a PC, the things that you should note are the colors of the sockets. If you have the two exact sticks, you should put them into the same color socket. Make sure the tabs are down and press down with some force until you hear a click on both sides. It's okay to press on one side first and then press the other side down after. Then I put in the power supply. This gave me a bit of a hard time since I was trying to do this with the case standing up, so I'd advise you to lay it down and do this. It would be a lot easier on you. Four screws and it's done. Next comes mounting the motherboard. The cool thing about this case is that it came with a removable tray that you can just snap in. I connected all the front port I.O. cables off screen since it was a pain to record that. The case you use will have these cables marked and your motherboard manual will show you where they plug in. There's front port power, LED, audio, and USB. This computer came with a speaker as well. Now for the graphics card. It was hard to get a shot inside of the case, so I just didn't. But what I did here was I removed one of the plates on the back of the case and just slid the card into the AGP slot. Also a quick tip to anyone buying graphics cards for old machines. If you're buying for AGP slots, make sure the card's contacts can fit into your board slot. There are different types of connectors, so be careful. Next comes the hard drive. This was rather easy since the case had an auto-locking mechanism. All I had to do was put four screws into the sides of the hard drive, and it mounted up just fine. Usually with a case this old, you need to put a screw or two into the side of the drive cage to keep it secure. Even some new cases do that. I plugged the IDE cable into the slot that was color-coded, but if your motherboard isn't color coded, just look for the master board. Next are the optical and floppy drives. I had to take off the front panel for this and all I had to do was put the screws into the sides of the drives, like the hard drive, and slide it in. Except for the floppy, that one didn't need screws. Here I just do a little bit of cable management as I plug the Molex connectors into the optical and hard drives and the small floor pin into the floppy drive. I also connected the top optical drive to the motherboard with an additional cable for CD audio. After that, I put the front panel back on and zip tied a few things. The first boot. It powers on just fine, and it detects the RAM and hard drive. Now to install Windows 98. The first thing I did here was I grabbed my Windows 98 disk I already had, and all it did was blink a cursor at me. So I googled some things up and I tried to create a boot floppy for my Windows 2000 laptop to see if I could boot up and then install from the disk in the optical drive, but again this didn't work. This time I used a different ISO image to create another Windows 98 installation CD, and then it worked. But I got an error every time I tried to format the hard drive. I tried multiple times, but the only thing that would work was to use Arch Linux to format the drive to FAT32, and after that it worked fine. Here's a little footage of Windows 98 installing. After I got to the desktop, I checked the device manager to find I didn't even recognize what video card I had. It was actually displaying it wrong. It was showing it as a generic PCI graphics card, but in fact it was an AGP card. 
I looked around online and I found some drivers for the Revo 128 and tried to put them on three floppies, but Windows 98 didn't like that and couldn't even read the floppies. I tried to put those same drivers on a CD and I forced the OS to install the driver. I quickly found out that I installed the driver for the wrong card. This was not the Revo 128, it was the Vanta Revo 128 TNT 2, a later model. After cursing NVIDIA for making their product name so similar, I checked their website again to find another package for the right card. I burned that to a CD, and that one didn't work. I found a newer GeForce Experience type program named Forceware from 2005 claiming to support this card, but when I burned it and tried to install it, it told me I had no NVIDIA card installed in my system. At this point, I was contemplating delaying the entire video for a whole week and buying a different graphics card, but I decided to try one more time. I found some older drivers from 2003 for the Vanta, installed them, and it worked just fine. I could change my resolution color depth, but I couldn't get rid of that weird tearing-like effect. I think that's just baked in the hardware. After breathing a sigh of relief, I installed Quake 3 and it ran quite well. The lowest FPS I got was about 14, but I got an average of 30 to 60 while playing. That's about it, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like or a comment, and thank you for watching.